Hi, I'm Robin Boyce and welcome to City Corner. Today we're going to be talking to the Urban League Young Professionals and we're going to learn more about the Thomas Dunn Learning Center. Come on back. Hi, I'm Robin Boyce and welcome back to City Corner. In the studios with me today are the president of the Urban League Young Professionals of Metropolitan St. Louis, Ms. Kenya Leonard, and along with her is Mr. Terrell Anderson, who is vice president of communications for the Urban League Young Professionals of Metropolitan St. Louis. Welcome to City Corner and Thank I'm so you glad you both us. could Thank come you. and uh, join us today to talk more about what you all are doing as young professionals. Okay. Um, recently you got an opportunity uh, to invite me uh, to a, a meeting, I got an opportunity actually I should say, to come to your meetings that you have on a monthly basis. Are they monthly meetings that you have? Yes, second Great. Wednesday of every month. Second and Wednesday of every month and we'll talk about that more and more throughout this interview. But got an opportunity to come in and get a chance to see how the young professionals of the Urban League are doing. I just wow! I didn't know that there was an organization or an auxiliary, I should mm -hmm. say, within the Urban League that was set up for young professionals. And wow, you guys just put it on like the president <laughs> of, of the United States. I was just really, and I really felt like I attended uh, Black University uh, in Jefferson City, Lincoln University, mm -hmm. when I graduated many moons ago. I won't say how many years that was, okay. but you all did a creed or you stood up and you did like a pledge, mm -hmm. something that we were taught to do uh, at this university many moons ago. Tell me about that. It's, it, it's an opening part of the meeting, almost like a prayer. Tell us about that. Well, what we do is we start off stating our mission um, and we also state our five point empowerment strategy as well as our vision for this year. Wow. Yes. So you are actually talking about and speaking a mission into the steps that you all are taking mm -hmm. in this process for the year. Tell, tell us a little bit about those missions. Okay. Well, the mission of the Urban League Young Professionals is basically to bring young professionals in and provide them with professional development, civic development, and leadership development, and to introduce them to the Urban League movement. So that's basically, in a nutshell, that's what our mission is. And it's also to give back to the community, to teach them what the importance is, it is of giving back to the community. Correct. And then our five point empowerment strategy can also be found on our website, um, but um, it goes over civic uh, engagement, uh, racial equality empowerment, um, just uh, racial justice empowerment, uh, economic, uh, social justice empowerment, um, education and youth empowerment, and there are five of them. I want to make sure I go over all of them, sure. but you can see them on our website. And then our vision for the year, we came up with it as a leadership team, and we sat down and we just kind of, you know, went back and forth, and we decided mm -hmm. what is it that Urban League Young Professionals wants to accomplish this year, sure. um, and what should we accomplish every year, basically. So our vision for our organization is to groom young leaders to be young professionals to be future leaders, and to um, Just empower people who can't empower themselves. Yes, really. Exactly. Okay, so you're actually within your organization. I mean, you would say how many young professionals are signed up right now who are working we, with we you? We have between, it's about 130. Really? Uh, members in our membership right Very now. Good. And you, mm -hmm. the organization, well, the Urban League has had this auxiliary for how many years now? We've been, We've been in existence for 14 years, oh. since 2000. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is an organization that a young person, say, for example, is graduating from college at this point or yes. high school. What ages, Terrell, are we talking about? Uh, we're talking from ages between 21 and 40, mm -hmm. but some of our other auxiliaries also serve young uh, youth in there, such as the New Lights, which mm -hmm. works with young teens. Mm -hmm. And we also okay, have Okay, so the New Head Lights start. is yes. a different group that, okay, mm -hmm. I've heard of the new lights, but the young professionals was totally new to me. So, okay, so you've got different auxiliaries within the Urban League that work with young people in the St. Louis community. Yes. Yes. So, getting back to young professionals, so we're talking 20 somethings to 40 mm -hmm. that can be a part of the organization? Yes, 21 through 40. 
Great. And, mm -hmm. and so do you find a lot of folks who are graduating from college that are coming to join up with the organization? Or what, what do you see coming to the Recently, um, you've seen a lot of young uh, college students, first time transplants that moved to the city of mm -hmm. St. Louis. So they're looking to get acclimated in the community. So first thing they say is, well, I was told that this would be a good organization to kind of get acclimated with the community, get involved and find out how can I serve the community. Mm -hmm. Great. Now, I met you all at a um, black journalist uh, networking function yes. that yes. was held. Uh, and how did you hear about that, that particular function? Well, we had one of their members came to our meeting. And what we try to do is we try to form collaborations and partnerships with other organizations because we don't want to reinvent the wheel a lot of times. We want to kind of, you know, basically forge and strengthen what's already mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. So they were having a networking event, so we figured we would come out and support it. Great, great. Mm -hmm. So are you finding young people in the St. Louis area really enlightened and really want to do some things, or is it hard to find young people to come and sign up? What, do you, what are you seeing out here? Well, well, one thing I'm seeing is that uh, with the trend going on right now, a lot of the, tr the trend that I'm seeing is between 25 and 35 year olds are looking for something to do. You have people looking to do things for graduate programs. You're looking at people that just want to make a difference. So right now, if people see you working together in collaboration with other organizations, they know you're serious about empowering the community and not just you know getting together mm -hmm. to just reinvent the wheel. Now we have a video mm -hmm. of a recruitment uh, mm -hmm. that you all have put together that I think is pretty neat. I, hopefully maybe we could play it a little bit so you can hear a little bit of the audio as well. Can we do that? Because uh, I really would like to see what it is you're doing. I thought it was really neat what you put together <laughs> and it's mm -hmm. kind of you were having a lot of fun putting this together. So April if we could play that that would be really neat. Um, so that we can let the audience see a little bit about what their really young professional is doing. Here we go. We I just don't know what to do about this resume. Don't worry, ULYP, we got it. Young professionals of Metropolitan St. Louis. We are achieving, growing, and reaching higher. Wow. Okay, that was a nice like capsize of some of the great things 
that you all are involved with in the community. So I, you've got to be excited to see something like that out there representing you and letting folks know what's going on. And as communications director, did you did you help direct and put that? I saw you all in the middle of that. <laughs> no, um, one, of, one of our esteemed YPs, uh, Dan Redden Jr., uh, has his own company, Doc Red Productions. He's done a lot of our video photography, He's kind of archiving a lot of our history. So him and uh, Kenya, our president, right, President Kenya right here, helped collaborate and make that together so that was very good mm -hmm. I mean it would you, it took a lot of heart to put that together because it, you, it looks like you really believe in mm -hmm. and what's going on here so are you seeing yourselves as the future of the Urban League I would say yes yes <laughs> you know and not necessarily as like positions in the Urban League sure. but part of a face of the organization a face of the Urban League in the community Right, because Definitely. the biggest thing about the Urban League, and I've been involved with the organization on some different auxiliaries and committees mm -hmm. over the years, is that it's all about membership mm -hmm. and that membership supporting mm -hmm. what the league does in the community. Exactly. Am I correct there? Exactly, exactly. Okay. So you're looking, really, this group would be the, the impetus for bringing in more folks who will be th become the future members, or leaders. Exactly, and actually when they become members of ULYP, they actually become members of the Urban League as well as the National Urban League and National Urban League Young Professionals. Okay. So there's a great benefit and there's a huge network of people that you get connected to once you become a part of Urban League Young Professionals. And, right. and right. we have to definitely be the trendsetters for the community. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of the changing of the guard with community leaders and they're looking for young people. We're the, we're the driving force in the community that's gonna carry the torch mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. next community leaders. Mm -hmm. And it's just up for us, up to us to utilize all the different aspects. Well, I guess you all are really excited about Mike McMillan coming yes. on board as a new CEO and president, uh, mm -hmm. one of my mentees from many, many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. And I, we're all very proud of him coming on. But a young person like himself, I guess that really, you all were like, whoa, mm -hmm. we're about to really take it on to the next level then. I mean, exactly. did, did you feel that kind of movement when that happened? Exactly. He has, he has a very, a very um, strong a desire to make change so he really pushes us to that next level um, and he makes sure he stays involved with us in our different programs and meetings and things like that Good. so he's not a distant you know person or a distant leader or anything like that he shows up to our meetings and he Good. basically tries to help us to encourage people to become members because we have a lot of guests that show up at our meetings a lot of times right. and it's always it's, it's that time between when they walk in the door mm -hmm. and helping them to make that commitment to saying, hey, I want to be a part of this movement. I want to right. be a part of something greater and something I, bigger. I want to thank you both so much for yes. coming in and talking with us today about thank the Urban you. League Young Professionals. This is an awesome organization, and we want to encourage more and more young people to get involved. There's plenty of things to do here in St. Louis, oh, right? Yes, it is. Okay, great. All right, I want to thank you so much. I'm Robin Boyce with City Corner. We'll be right back after these messages. financial advisor is being accused of committing one of the largest investment frauds in the history of the United States. I guess we're not going to Aspen. That's fine. You see, I like tennis balls. He likes insider trading. So he's going to jail and I'm going to a shelter. And no, they're not the same thing. Shelters are for good pets that want to be adopted. Jails are for criminals. I've done nothing. Uh-oh. Okay, I stole a cheeseburger once on my dog. For those dealing with the struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. Visit aarp.org caregiving for advice and support. Over 13 million people are affected by famine, war, and drought in the Horn of Africa. Make a simple text donation of $10. But do more than donate. Forward the facts.
some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Hi, I'm Robin Boys for City Corner. We're back in the studios and we're going to be talking a little bit about the Thomas Dunn Learning Center. And my guest in the studio with me is Ms. Paula Gardner, who is Executive Director of the Thomas Dunn Learning Center. Hello, Paula. Hello. Thanks, Robin. It's so good to see you. You too. You too. Uh, we uh, met each other, and I bring this up a lot on the program. I, I meet a lot. I've met a lot of people. I say within the last three, four years after being involved with this project called Strive, uh, Striving to Reduce Violence Among Youth in the St. Louis Community, which was a program that was created by the St. Louis Health Department, mm -hmm. along with the Centers for Disease Control out of Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. In that process there, there were lots of community organizations that came together and you were a part of a community organization yes. with an older person um, uh, down over in the Jeff Vanderloo area mm -hmm. at that time. And so we all kind of came together, met through uh, Dr. Laverne Carter who was also involved with doing some uh, work with the um, uh, Automatic Black Caucus as well. Mm -hmm. And um, then, you know, you moved on to doing some other things and I met you at the St. Louis Regional uh, Unbanked Task Force meeting. Yes. Uh, what, again, we're just you know, getting <laughs> back together. And you said, Robin, Robin, you got to come over and check out this new place where I am. I'm like, okay. And, and then I saw you <laughs> the next meeting. You said, Robin, Robin, you got to come check this place out. So I finally set up time to come over there with you. And lady, oh my goodness, to walk into the Thomas Dunn Learning Center, I mean, it's like a jewel. It's beautiful. In South St. Louis, and I'm so surprised about the people who don't know about this, yeah. this center. I mean, how long has it been over there? First off, tell us about Thomas Dunn. Who is this person? Okay, I'll tell you about Thomas Dunn. Thomas <laughs> Dunn is one of those true rags to riches story. He was an immigrant through from, from Europe to Canada, came to the United States, homeless, penniless, when he was 21 years old, came to St. Louis because it was a happening city at that time. And we talk about, what, 19-something? Uh, this 18? was in the 1800s. 1800s. This was in the 1800s. Oh. So he chopped wood for steam engines, sh short wood for steam engines. He worked wherever he could down on the riverfronts. He made his bed on a shelf in a, in a store that he worked in under the cash register, and that's where he slept. And he worked sun up till sundown, saving his pennies. He invested his money in some land in the Central West End. Mm -hmm. He ultimately opened up Dunn Mercantile um, downtown. Mercantile Bank? Mer it, was, it was what we would think of kind of as a pawn shop right really? now. Really? And nowadays. But he, he did anything and everything and worked and saved his pennies and saved his pennies. He was always a humanitarian and philanthropist. And when he retired, he decided that he wanted to open up a boy's home because he wanted to give back to homeless boys what he didn't have and what he had to learn the hard way. And so in 1930, he opened up the Thomas Dunn Home for Working Boys, hmm. which was at uh, Locus and Ewing at the, at the time. And um, he set up the Thomas Dunn Memorials at that time to keep that going. And, and what made the Thomas Dunn Home for Working Boys so special is the program that he built, a very holistic program there that taught art and music and politics and, and etiquette and everything that those young men needed to survive in the world besides just working and sleeping and eating. Okay. And because the program was so great, it then expanded to the Clinton Peabody Community Center and the oh. boys, the St. Louis um, Boys Club started okay. in the Thomas Dunn home too. Okay. And as time went on, there wasn't the need for the center anymore, the home. So in 1960, that closed. In 63, we, they opened up the Thomas Dunn Learning Center at Marquette Rec Center. Okay, and that's in South uh, that's, City. That's in South City. Right. It's in Dutchtown. It's okay. in Marquette Park. And so there they started their, 
their educational programs and the programs grew and grew and with Thomas Dunn Memorial Funds they built the gym the Tom the Dunn Memor Marquette gym okay. then they built a parking lot across the street that's a beautiful little park and over there. it is a beautiful park and then the then the place got too busy and so the city said we'll give you a perpetual lease to this land next door if you want to build your own building and so wow. things were going well at the time. This was in the 80s, early 90s, and 91 that was realized and the building that you came to visit that building was is built. That just beautiful. We've got some photographs of some activities that you have going on. Now this building uh, for the longest time was a place where adults came for learning. Yes, and it still is. It is primarily an adult uh, learning center for lifelong learning. Our mission is that anyone that comes in is enriched by the programs that they they come for. Mm -hmm. We serve everyone from 18 to 108 wow. with with a wide variety of programs. And right. then we do have some children's programs too. You've got the, the building is just absolutely phenomenal. I love the fact that you've got some great lighting mm -hmm. that comes through Beautiful. the building. It looks like you have art classes that are going on there. We have we have an art lab and I just yesterday I sat down and and we developed we're going to have figurative drawing there this right. fall. We've got sculpture. We, we're going to be doing some therapeutic classes. I saw a kiln in there. Went there's to the a, open there's house a that you had. And I saw a kiln in there. I'm like, wow, pottery. There is a kiln with lots of lots of uh, things mm -hmm. to, to do sculpting. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll be doing a lot of stuff in there. I'm also working with some quilters and some needlework Neat. people to have... Um, not your grandma's quilting right. going but, on. But moving on to some really great quilting kind of right. ideas and right. projects that can go on. And can, now, the, this community where the Thomas Dunn Learning Center is located, it's a mixed community now. Um, it's, it's kind of grown into this kind of eclectic uh, area where you have a whole lot of different folks from around the world. Yes, it's, it's a great multi-ethnic, multi-generational yeah. neighborhood. Um, it is, it's fabulous. The cobblestones, Dutch. when I drove, I was like, wow. <laughs> I haven't seen cobblestones in so long and on city streets, yeah. but they're still there yes. in that area. And it's just surrounded by all these beautiful trees. Now, it, you ha it was kind of shut down for a little while, right? Was it a little dormant for a minute or two? Well, the community college, St. Louis Community College has been running enrichment programs there in the fall and the spring. And they will continue to do that because they, they offer some, some great programs and they have a great following of people that come to, to those classes. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, we did get a slow down quite a sure. bit, and, um, but that's changing. But they hired you to come on board to revitalize the place. Now you've got some really good stuff that's going on over there. You're talking about possibly some incubators? That yes, you're we, in there? we have our first incubator space. Um, well, we've, we're changing some cubicles around and we have our first group, our first agency that's coming in Excellent. and it is called a program called Irons in the Fire. Wow. And Irons in the Fire is a new nonprofit that help people go back to college. Mm. They they start from the very beginning, what's your passion? What are you interested in? The best school that would be, you know, for you to go to. Um, the best funding that you can find, and then how to juggle all those irons in the fire if you've got kids, if you're a single parent, mm -hmm. if you're trying to work full-time and part-time, but you still want to go back to school, and that program helps you every step of the way. That's excellent. So you've got a, a space enough for how many incubators to come in here and kind of get um, started? Two, two right now. Okay, and, great. And with a little conference room yes. off to the side of it's that. It's just so. really a great facility mm -hmm. for all kinds of projects. Now, you're also looking to have community organizations come in and utilize the place? Yeah, I'm looking for all kinds of all kinds of people and programs and classes to come it's in. It's great space. We have, You've got how many classrooms over there? Uh, spaces for classrooms. We have we have a computer lab. We have a computer lab that can also be used as a general classroom. We have two other general classrooms set up with whiteboard, blackboard, um, mm -hmm. desks, tables. We can configure whatever way is needed. We've got our art lab, which has sinks and cabinets in the kiln and, Very and everything that we need in the art lab. We have our training demo kitchen, which is the one of kitchen, my kitchen, oh my goodness, this kitchen, wow. It, the kitchen is fabulous. We have, we have. I'm just saying, y'all have to come <laughs> see this place. It's just a great facility. It's just, yes. wow. I, 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 when I walked in there and I saw the kitchen, Two ovens in there? Four ovens, Four. eight burners, two industrial microwaves. We're set up counter style with 15 stools at the counter. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we've got our first cooking class starts this coming Tuesday. Okay. And um, we start our summer classes this coming week. And um, our cooking class, we'll have a class on taking one main ingredient sure. and turning it into three totally different meals. Wow. So they're, they're healthy, they taste good, and they're easy on the budget. Now, during the so, open house you had, um, her name was Beth. I forget her Beth last Diamond. name. Beth Diamond. She came in, she was awesome, and she was making uh, salsa. Yes, she had and a she, salsa bar going. Oh, my God. <laughs> she had all these different sauces and she had set up on the on the uh, wall mm -hmm. different ingredients that she had the tomato salsa uh <laughs> mango salsa which I had never had and that mm -hmm. was just like so yummy and she had the um what was it the uh, and the guacamole the guacamole the yeah. absolutely fabulous and it was all fresh she mm -hmm. made it she mm -hmm. said you can do it too mm -hmm. um she uh, took us through a demonstration of everything there in the kitchen it smelled so good um, the other uh, piece that I really love is the, the room next door to the kitchen. It's like, wow, is it not an auditorium? It's a small or? auditorium. It seats up to 90 people. We've, we've been having neighborhood meetings there. The health department is coming to have an event there next week. St. Louis Youth, um, MERS Goodwill is having their financial education program for Excellent. the kids before they get their paycheck um, that will be there all day Friday so that's really exciting and hats off to those guys yes. um, it, it it is designed that you don't need a microphone because of the ceiling and you can have a packed room and you can still speak softly yeah. and you can and it still echoes it's, to everyone. Was it designed that so way? It was, purposely? It was designed that like way. Purposely. You have a lot of peaks in, in that whole building. You've got yeah. the beacon up front, which is kind of the glass there and the foyer mm -hmm. as you come in. And then as you go through even in the library, mm -hmm. with a working fireplace? With a working fireplace, nice and wow. cozy in the wintertime. This, this coming fall, we're launching a book club, a fireside book club, and a list of books will be offered. And then once a month, an expert on the history of that book and what that book, the contents of that book, will lead the discussion in front of the fireplace and a cup of tea. Well, see, now, it, it, because the kitchen's right across the hallway from me. Now, this is really a great building. It's in the St. Louis City community. Mm -hmm. You're looking for folks to come and utilize it, use yes. this place. In the fall, we're also launching a program called The, kitchens, the Kitchen Table. Everything happens there. Well, yes, so, it does. Yes, you it know, does. from balancing your yes. checkbook, yes. developing a meal plan for yes. diabetics, uh, hairdos for homecoming. Wow. wow. Just anything and every relationships, anything and everything that you can think of that happens around your kitchen table. So if you or anybody else has a passion for something and you want to pass it on to the community, and that's what it's all about is lifelong learning and teaching other people about things, come, call me, hour, two hours, Paula, pass that on. I've got a friend coming to do couponing. She just started and she's getting all this free an stuff art. and donating it. It's definitely it. art and you do it at the kitchen table. Paul, I want to thank you so much for coming in oh, and talking thank you, with Robin. us about the, thank you so the much. Thomas Dunn Learning Center. It's located at 3113 Gasconade. Yes. A lot of people got a little lost getting over there, but just go down South Grand. Just go South right Grand. On, right on the corner <laughs> of Marquette Park. It's just come in right the big there. blue gates. It's, yeah. The, oh my God. It's a beautiful facility. Great place for weddings and parties and different things that people could possibly do over there. I want to thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to City Corner. We'll see you next time.